All right, I'm recording. So how have all the interviews gone for you so far? Uh, Good. It's been pretty intense. Uh, All of last week was pretty packed and the week before that as well. And and today I'm doing sort of double shifts, I was going to say. First, Aussie interviews in the morning and then European ones in the evening. So it's it's a pretty packed schedule. But the the interest is, is, yeah, is is really big. So that's that's fun. Yeah, cool. Well, uh, you know, we're promoting a new album, um, Sometimes the World Isn't Enough, by your band, The Night Flight Orchestra. Um, I know the band kind of started off as it was like a fun project that you did while you weren't playing with soil work and it wasn't like a, you know, a big project, but now you've got a couple of albums out on a major label and, uh, you've got a new one coming out the 29th of June. Can you tell us a little bit about it and, uh, you know, how it started and, you know, how it became a big thing? Yeah, like like you mentioned at first, it was sort of like a, a, a fun project, but I think somewhere we, we knew that it could become pretty serious because, mm. uh, I mean, first time we jammed, I think that was in 2009, we got together, you know, yeah. after me and David sort of planned to start a band that sort of captures um, sort of late 70s, early 80s era and then mm. sort of make it into our own because we felt like it, it, it's missing out there and we wanted to create our own soundtrack of, of being on the road, you know, sort of mm. like road trip music. Mm-hmm. So, and then we found the right people, and then it, it was really magical when we got together and jam, and, and um, I think we realized pretty quickly that this is going to shape into something really special, you know, and I, I think it just took us, like, maybe two albums to sort of channel all of our, you know, influences, which is, is a lot. It, it's quite a mess. So, um, and I think it all sort of fell into place with Amber Galactic and, and also the new one, you know, I think we, we've we definitely hijacked an era and, and made it into our own. Um, that's what it feels like, you know, because it's as much as nostalgia that is, that is in, involved. And, you know, I think it, it's also something that is timeless, you know, and, and mm. something that makes sense today and that is needed out there. Yeah, for sure. Now, I just, like, listened to the full album today, and um, I really dig it. I've listened to some of your older stuff as well in the past, and... um. And some of the songs that really stuck out to me, uh, one was uh, Lovers in the Rain, you know, kind of had like a Duran Duran feel. And I just kind of heard it and like, yeah, wow, this came out in like 1985. This would have been a number one single. Can you tell us a bit about that song? <laughs> yeah, that one is, is, is very special for sure. It has that sort of, um, it's sentimental in an 80s way, I guess. Um mm-hmm. And and like you mentioned, you know, Duran Duran, it also rem- it reminds me of sort of like Ultra Box a little bit as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, it's it, yeah, it's a beautiful song and it's written by David and uh, it's a fantastic sort of like slide guitar um, melody in there. And it's it, it's it's highly addictive, you know, and uh, it, it, it takes you, it definitely takes you back, you know, and you sort of connect, you, you connect with, with sort of childhood uh, in a way, but at the same time, it's it's something that's I don't know. It, it's definitely a song that can definitely cross over. I think mm. you know to um, because it's it's very organic and, and it, it, it's a timeless way of writing songs, especially with that sort of melody running through it. You know that that I make I think that it makes sense today as well. So it's um it's it's a beautiful song and it will be uh, the next video as well actually. Yeah, for sure. Um, mm. You know, it's kind of funny because I, when I think of like melodic death metal bands, I saw work for me was always the band that had uh, the best clean vocals as well as early scar symmetry. I really liked them as well. But um, mm. it's kind of cool hearing you just do clean vocals like the whole album. Um, another song on it uh, this time is a really cool song because I think it's a little bit heavy. It has a pretty gripping solo in it, but it's, uh, you know, it's pretty, mm. you know, in a major key and it's melodic. Uh, can you tell us a bit about that one? Yeah, I mean, I think that's definitely like the perfect opening track, and, and, and I don't know if it's like representative of, of, of the whole album, but I, I think that you know it, it is a diverse album, and it all makes sense together. You know, there, it, it, there's definitely like sort of a theme running through it, and, and when you listen to to the beginning of that song, it has that sort of like deep purple feel to it, but then when when the song hits in, it's almost sort of like a, like live and let die, you know. It sounds like sort of like James Bond sort of oriented, but it's 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 really cool with the orchestration there as well. And um, I think um, 
it has sort of like a, a, a combined 70s and 80s feel to it, and it's kind of hard to put put a, a label, you know. And I think mm. it's, that, that's something that's really interesting. I think even though there's so many reference, references you can throw around, it, it's still something that you can't really put your finger on what, exactly what kind of music it is. It's like mm. you can say AOR, you can say classic rock, or it, but it's it's not. I mean, it's hard for us even to sort of like what, what is this music we're creating. You know, and it's so. I mean, yeah, it, it, it's a killer track, and it's probably the sort of like the heaviest track on the album. You know, uh, and, and you, you also mentioned there's sort of like a, a ripping solo. It's beautiful. one of my favorite solos on the album as well. Fantastic uh, stuff. Yeah. Mm. Uh, you just mentioned James Bond before, and the album is called "Sometimes the World Ain't Enough," and it kind of seems like almost mm. a James Bond kind of title. Is that kind of the theme you had going for the album, like a James Bond kind of theme? Uh, not really. I think it has more a connection to to uh, Amber Galactic, and it, especially with the cover. You see, you see the cover for Amber Galactic. You see the girl oh, there. Yeah. She's sort of like curious, and she's standing there, you know, trying to make up her mind, you know. And she's sort of like, and then, then on, on sometimes the world ain't enough. She's there. The helmet is on, and, uh, and the the spacesuit is on as well. And she's sort of like convinced, you know, I'm doing this, and that's. Sort of why we took because there was just a song named "Sometimes the World Ain't Enough" from the beginning. It started with a song, and then we felt that 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 title would be pretty representative for the album, and also obviously with with, with the connection with with the two different covers. Yeah, for sure. I was like mm. a guy that you know worked in radio, and I think this album almost has a kind of more mainstream appeal, but it's you know kick ass at the same time. Um, do you kind of hope that you get a bit of like? more mainstream exposure on this compared to what you'd get with soil work yeah i mean i mean of course we 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 want to share this it, it deserves to be shared with the yeah. world you know we're so excited about it you know and, and, and like like you need to listen to this you know of course we we, we, we want to reach as many people as possible and yeah. um, and uh and i mean it didn't it didn't start with that let's write music that reaches a lot of people it's more like there's so much love behind it now that it's done you you really want to share it, you know, and I think it definitely has, you know, crossover potential, you know, for, for mainstream radio as well, you know, and yeah. there, there are a lot of sort of 80s influences in all kinds of music right now, I guess, as well. And um, so it, it's going to be really interesting to, to see what, what, what's going to happen, you know, if, if, if it can cross over, but I, because I think it's something really timeless and something really organic that is needed on radio. Yeah, for sure. Do you think sort of like having a connection, you know, you're in soil work and that's a heavy metal band, do you think that kind of might be off-putting for radio stations, even though this album's kind of totally different? Because I noticed in Australia, you've got Triple J's, the big alternative radio station, and they play bands like Anathema on the metal show, even though they haven't done a metal album in like 20 years. Do you think, you know, the soil work thing might kind of put radio stations off? Uh, yeah, I mean, I hope not. It, it, it's really tiring sometimes to sort of with the metal world, you, you feel sort of like limited, you know, and, and we are in a metal label, and I'm just really grateful that they really believed in, in this band, you know, and it's a great mm. label regardless. I don't really care if it's metal or oriented or not, but it's, um, yeah, I think it deserves to reach outside the metal world as well, and meanwhile, I think we've been like, we have become every metalhead's guilty pleasure somehow. Yeah. That's the impression I get here in Europe, at least. So, um, yeah, but I think it, it's just really good, genuine music, you know, and and with a lot of presence in it. And I think that that, that deserves to get exposure exposure just about anywhere because it's you know it's 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 the real deal, you know, to, to sort of sum it up. Yeah, I had a big smile on my face uh, just listening to the album. Like, even if you only listen to death metal, you can't not like <laughs> have a bit of fun and listen to it. It's enjoyable. Um, yeah. Did you actually yeah. dance to it as well? Uh, no, not really, but uh, I'm a little bit. <laughs> yeah. I've okay, been right. playing it all week in the car, though. <laughs> um, all right, cool. It's funny, kind of, people probably wouldn't say there's much connection between Night Flight and, uh, you know, soil work or melodic death metal, but melodic death metal was the genre that sort of brought in the synthesizers and a bit of that kind of poppy influence. So would you say there is kind of a connection between both bands? Um... Melodically, maybe a little bit, you know, sort of, because we, we, I mean, this, our music with Night Flight is really uplifting, but it has a lot of like sort of sentimental melodies as well, and sometimes slightly sort of 
melancholic in an ABBA way, I would say. Yeah. Uh, I, I think we've had that a little bit with Solo as well, as well. But I mean, it, for me, it, to me, it's really, really important that it's com- complete, two completely different things. You know, if I want to start another band, it needs to be something completely different. You know, and and the, the switch is very easy. I know very quickly. It's like, okay, hey, this is this is for Solo or this is for Nightlight. You know, when I write songs, for example, it's uh, so. I mean, but yeah, of course, you, you can find things here and there. You know, that sort of. Uh, you, you, where you can get connection between the two bands, you know, and I, I think I've I've developed a lot uh, as a singer starting Nightlight, and I think I brought that with me to solo work as well, you know, and, and become a better metal singer too. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, your vocals down the yeah. top notch on this. That definitely seems like you're getting better all the time, which is uh, pretty cool mm-hmm. at this stage well, in your you. career. Thank you. Um, yeah. Oh yeah, I was just going to ask. Uh, have you got tours planned? I don't suppose you've come to Australia. I don't know if there'd be a huge demand, but I hope there would be. I'll, I'll definitely go. Yeah, I mean that's definitely in the plans. I mean, I, I think we're growing a little bit of a fan base, you know, and, and obviously it's a, it's a matter of budget as well. Um, it takes quite a budget to to, to do uh, an Australian tour, but if, if the demand is there and people pick up the album, you know, uh, I, I know we're going to work really hard on making it happen because I think that 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 would be fantastic, and we sort of aim to carry on the ABBA legacy when it comes to touring in, in Australia as well. Because I believe that we have a little bit of that. There's there's some ABBA flair to our music as well, and, and it just feels like it would be very suitable for Australia somehow. So um, we'll see uh, what, what's going to happen. But uh, we're going to do some festivals this summer in Europe, and, uh, and then we're going to embark on a two-month-long uh Full European tour in November, December. So that, that's that's going to be really exciting. And then we'll see what's going to happen in, in well next year. You know, uh, who knows? I would love to. Yeah, and um, I thought while I got you on the phone, I'd just ask you: Is there much happening in our soil work world at the moment? Is there any you know plans for a album sometime in the future or another tour? Uh, we just finished up a new album actually oh, wow. in the middle of it all. Yeah, uh, it's really, really great. Um, I'm really, really pleased with it, and and it's it's going to be released at the end of the year or the beginning of the next. So that, I guess that's all I can say right now. But it's yep. uh, I'm 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 very thrilled about it. Is uh, Bastian Thuskard still the drummer? If that's how you pronounce yes, his name, sir. Yes, yes, that's how you pronounce it. Yeah, perfect. Um, yeah, that was his first recording with a band. He's been playing with us live for quite some time, but first real recording, and he did really, really good. It's awesome. Awesome. Well, I can't wait to hear it. And I'm just wondering, do you still talk to uh, Dirk much these days? Do you know how he's going with the Mega Dudes? Um, every now and then, uh, not very often. He has a pretty intense touring schedule as well. A lot of things going on in, in, the, in the Megadeth camp. And I mean, meanwhile, I've been extremely busy with both Sword and Night Flight. So there's not that much time left over, and there's enough emails <laughs> as they're already. You know, it, 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 the inbox is pretty full, but you know, we, we talk every now and then. So. Oh, cool. Well, um, yeah. that's all the questions I've got today, but, uh, you know, I hope you come down soon. Actually, I uh, shook your hand last time you were here. We were at the Brisbane Soil Work show. Uh, my friend had every Soil Work CD you've ever released and wanted to get them all signed. Oh, so, yeah, I was with that guy. Cool. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Very yeah. cool. Yeah, that's the time I brought my, my dad with me as well. My dad was there the last time. Okay. So does, think what does he think yeah. of uh, Soil Work? Does he headbang along to it? Yeah, he's. I mean, he's definitely followed our career, uh, and and he 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 likes some of the stuff. You know, I wouldn't consider him a metalhead, but you know, yeah. he grew up with sort of seventies rock and and all that mm. stuff too. So, so I would appreciate Night Flight, Night Flight a bit more, maybe. Yeah, yeah, a little bit more. Yeah, I would say to be honest. Yeah, but he's he he had so much fun coming with us on tour though. Oh, cool. Well, uh, good luck with the album. I'm really digging this one. It's uh, you know, <laughs> such a fun album that you know. You can't not listen to it. It's cool. It's good to have a break from metal, too, because sometimes when you hear people scream at you all day, you want to have something melodic. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I feel very I feel very balanced right now, you know, musically. It's it's best of both worlds, I feel. It's it's fun. Yeah, definitely. Well, uh, thanks very much, Dirk, for um, taking your time out today. Um, sorry, I have to be on. Um, anyway, mm-hmm. 